So, Bonnie. Yes. Uh, this morning I was on my way to our lavish nine-story Pope on Film Studios where we record each episode of the podcast each yes. week in front of a live but heavily chloroformed studio audience. <laughs> And as I was on my way to the studio, which, uh, again, is located right smack dab in the middle of beautiful, racist, Shawnee, Oklahoma. <laughs> and, you know what, and you know what? Let me let me let me just pause this opening and uh, go a bit off script, if I may. If you're in the neighborhood and so many people visit Shawnee, Oklahoma, you really should visit the studio. This, yes. this is for our loyal listeners out there, of which there are so many. It, you know, it. it our, you should visit the studio. It's a great tour of our studios. Yes, ask, ask for yes, ask for Babs. Ask for Babs. Yeah, ask for Babs. I, can't I was tell you so what. there. I was so yeah. there with you. Go Good. ahead. Because we have a psychic bond. We have a psychic bond. Just, yes. I can't tell you why. Just ask for Babs. The trade secret. So, mm -hmm. you listeners out there, I'm just saying, if you're a real big fan of our podcast, The Pope on Film, then you would get a real treat out of our Pope on Film studios tour despite what a few bitter haters on yelp have to say yes a few yelp haters who are probably just jealous of us anyway but despite mm -hmm. what the angry yelp reviews have to say our pope on film studio tour is worth the 80 dollar ticket price yes it is yes Very it, it most so. certainly is that you know why said, because each each I shouldn't say this because of FCC and things like that, but I'm going to anyway. Um, Cause each tour by Babs ends with a happy ending. Nice. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. I didn't want to mention it. That's worth there, but... the 80 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad you said it and not me. I, yeah. I was going to say it, but then, you know, so you said it, not me. So <laughs> I, I, I can't be on any more NSA watch lists. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, it's it. That being said, that being said, we have heard the complaints. We have read the bad Yelp reviews. So we have been busy behind the scenes. Yes. Trying to spice up the Pope on film studio tour. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like, you know, this might be a spoiler alert, but you know when, like, a theme park closes down a really old ride, it's yeah. like what happens to the audio animatronics, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we are proud to announce that the Pope on Film Studio Tour has recently acquired the old Jaws robot from Universal Studios Hollywood in the 80s. Yes. We, so... So that's exciting. Did we get the Chuck E. Cheese yeah. robots? We need the uh, Chuck E. Cheese robots. That's a bit. That's a bit beyond our budget. The yeah. the old Jaws robot from the eighties is is pretty well. Chuck E. Cheese is just throwing them out, as far as I know. Yeah, yeah, but but that's not all. Let's let's also not forget that. Okay, we couldn't afford the entire eighties King Kong. <laughs> audio because it's huge it's a huge it thing it's a huge thing but we did get his thumb and pointer finger from his left hand yes so that is a pretty big get for us and let me tell you something so too. so so that just means that as you do going through the tour king kong can give you a big loser symbol yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's exactly what it means thumb and, and four finger and, and, yeah and let me tell you, it really is. Some people, some people might not believe this, but it really is scary when the Jaws robot pops out of the supply closet. <laughs> it really is scary because because I'm not sure if you if, if you know this, but I we looked it up, and sharks usually don't live in su supply closets. Usually. Uh -huh. Sometimes they do, obviously, but not all the time. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And it, now I won't say where the King Kong thumb and pointer finger are hiding on the Pope on Film Studio Tour because it's yes. quite a surprise. But I will say this. Be sure and flush the toilet 
after you use the urinals on the third floor. I feel like I've already said too much there. Yes. But just make sure you make sure you flush the toilet. Well, we had also gotten the the older gentleman in the Lederhosen who will castrate a goat with his teeth on the tour. Yeah, yeah, because we're trying to spice it up. We're that, trying to that's spice that's it up. always a family favorite. Yeah. It, it, just trying to spice it up is all. Mm -hmm. So at, I was on our way to our lavish studios to record our new episode, and as always, I happened to pass by one of our city's three crappy movie theaters. Yeah, and I'm always I'm always trying to read the theater's marquee, slowing down, swerving, changing lanes without paying attention, causing numerous accidents, so that I can read the marquee, because I try and stay up to date on the newest releases in Hollywood. And the theater was playing a movie. I'm assuming a new movie. hadn't heard one I haven't heard of before. Yeah, it's called Ninjago Butu. Ninjago Butu. Ninjago Butu, all spelled out, all one word. Ninjago Butu. Now, I, I, I tried looking up the plot synopsis yeah. for Ninjago Butu, and I, I couldn't find anything. So I'm only, I one can only assume with a name like Ninjago Butu. I'm assuming that it's like a modern day Nanook of the North meets Tarzan. Sounds you know, so there are these, like it, yeah. Yeah, so there are these white scientists, and they're up in Antarctica, whatever, and they find this Eskimo, and he's all alone. He's the last of his kind. He's been living in an igloo all of his life. He's yeah. never seen the white man. Mm -hmm. Indigenous, you know, never yeah. seen whitey before. He, he just has his Eskimo ways. And the yes. scientists are all, we need to bring him back to America. Of course, there's the one woman scientist, the one female scientist. Maybe we should leave Ninjago Butu here. But of course, they don't listen to the female. You're a female scientist. So they get Ninjago Butu. They bring him to America. And he's just oh, blown you away. Skipped, you skipped over how they brought him back, though. How, how did they bring him back? They shot him with a tranquilizer dart and then tied him on the fender of their truck. Yes, yes, and then they mm -hmm. drive away with him. Yeah. I, I'm really excited for the scene where they take Ninjago Butu to the fancy dinner and everybody has monocles and uh, like opera glasses, even though there's no opera, and they're all like, oh, so you are the indigenous Eskimo I've heard so much about. <laughs> and then he ruins the party by eating just a crap ton of whale blubber. <laughs> And everyone's like, How, where did Ninjago Butu get the whale blubber? But he just, he has his ways, you yes, know? Yes, he does. His and strange, course, mystical, Inuit ways. Yeah. And of course, I don't even think I need to say this, but of course the female scientist falls in love with Ninjago Butu. Yes. Oh, but there's more, Bunny. On the way to the studio, I also pass a video store. An actual video store. They still exist. They still exist. Yes, it, at least one chain does. Small towns, primarily in the Midwest, but small towns are littered with retail chains that no one else has. Like, really? like, a, like... Everywhere I go, we are surrounded by dollar generals. And I yeah. always thought that that was interesting because all of my life in Phoenix and in Sacramento, I had never seen a dollar general. But now every small town has at least six dollar generals. And I've been wondering, <laughs> like, how in the hell did I not notice this, the dollar generals? But as it turns out, just this week, there was an article in Bloomberg Business Week yeah. talking about how... Um, when a small town can't afford a Walmart, that's when Dollar General slides in. <laughs> and that's what the article is about. It's an eight page article about how Dollar General is basically just it, it's a general store. Yeah, it's a general store for small towns that can't that aren't big enough for a Walmart. And they're all over the freaking place here. Another thing that small towns have that big towns do not have is a video chain called Family Video. Family Video. Yeah, yeah. They're a video rental store. They're all over 
small town America. They are all over the place. They're all over America. They even have some in Canada. Family video, with the name of which I find funny because they have a family video in Seminole, yeah. Oklahoma. And that theater has – that family video store has a, a beaded small room in the back that sells porn. So yes. it's – not okay. so family video, but literally the way you would describe that in the eighties is what they still have. It's amazing. Yeah, the one, the one, um, the one that I was a member of. I forget forget the name of it down in Virginia when I was down there. Yeah, they had a little back room just like that with the beaded curtain, and it yep. had the the covers of the porn in in like a big binder yeah so you just like stood at this desk and flipped through the binder and if you if you found one you liked then they had all these little rings with numbers on them yeah and, yeah and you take the number and you turn it in and rent it yeah yeah so family video family video is is still a thing their marquee had a video uh advertisement they have a small marquee in front of the family video yeah. on my way to the studio and they mention the movies that they have for rent there and they were advertising a new movie yeah at family video that i had never heard before that i was quite surprised the film is called baby driver wish upon the house wish upon the house <laughs> baby driver wish upon the house Mm -hmm. Now, I tried looking up the film Baby Driver Wish Upon the House, and I found nothing. But I can only assume from the name Baby Driver Wish Upon the House that it's a directed DVD sequel to Baby Driver in which yeah. he wishes that he had a house. I, I think so, yeah. That, that yeah. makes sense for the title. Yeah, makes absolute sense. That's exact, yeah. That has to be what this movie is. I'm very excited about the direct to DVD sequel, Baby Driver Wish Upon the House. See, Hopefully, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of hoping. Uh, I think the family video stores, the mom and pop stores, can make a comeback now. Oh yeah, I think so. You know, because yeah, because the time. only reason anybody would go there if they're old like us. So yeah. we, you know, and we would go just for the whole nostalgia of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, the, when Natasha and I first moved here, we would go to family video all the time, all the time and rent stuff. It's mm -hmm. weird because it's exactly the same as you remember it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's weird. 